Yesterday was Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday. Shrove comes from the Latin word shrive, which means Anyone? No one speaks Latin? Shrive, no, I do not speak Latin. Shrive means to repent or seek forgiveness. Um, we enter a season of Lent. And Lent comes from the Anglo-Saxon word, which means... Who was paying attention last year? Oh, I could have preached the same sermon and nobody would have known. <laughs> Man! Lent, the Anglo-Saxon word means spring. I didn't want to preach about spring with it being 10 below zero outside, so we're not talking about that. But we enter this season of repentance, of seeking God's forgiveness for our lives, and we get this text from Matthew, which happens to be in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus is teaching his disciples about three things. Fasting, praying, and giving alms. The three things that we're supposed to do, and how are we supposed to do them? In secret. So that no one knows. Here's the little twist on that, though. How many of you remember we have the baptismal candle lit tonight because it's a connection between the ashes, is a connection between water and cleansing. In the old days, they actually used ash to clean. It actually is a cleanser. So the cross on your forehead is a reminder of the cross that was placed on your forehead when you were baptized. If you were baptized in a Lutheran church, the pastor probably after the baptism stuck their finger in the water and then came over to your forehead and said, Name, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. So the cross that was just placed on your forehead to remind you of your mortality reminds you of the fact that you are God's child claimed in these waters and cleansed from everything that is brought to you. But this candle is lit because of that connection. And we're supposed to do these things in secret. And when we get baptized, we get handed a candle. and Or we don't get handed a candle. They hand a candle to our parents, right? Because most of us were wee little when we were baptized. So we didn't get fire handed to us. But when they handed that candle off to the parents, they said... Right. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works. That's Matthew chapter 5. That's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And now we get to Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus says, Do everything in secret. So my question to you is why? Why are we supposed to do these things if nobody is going to see them? What's the point to that? I mean, we all in our human nature want people to know that we're good people, right? We go out of our way to do things and make sure that people notice them so that they know that we're good people, right? Remember, you're in church. We all do it. Because we all want that reward. Because that's how we're wired. And that's why we, as Lutherans, celebrate Lent every year to help maybe get us to undo that wiring or to look at life a little bit different. Because Jesus here tells us the reasons why we're supposed to do these things, right? You're supposed to give in secret so that no one sees you, so that you don't receive the reward of the fact that people say, oh, look at them, they're a great person, they're giving all this money to this, these people over here, they need it. Or they see you standing on a street corner and praying. How many of you stand on the street corner and pray, first of all? Good. That'd be a little interesting in the day's day. But you're not supposed to pray out in front of other people. You're supposed to go into basically into a closet, is what Jesus is saying here, and pray quietly to God. Which is also interesting. You notice we skipped some verses here tonight. We read Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and then we skipped to 16. 7 through 15 is the Lord's Prayer, in which Jesus tells us to pray Not with elegant words, but to pray out loud and in public with other people. Because the Lord's Prayer is not a private prayer. It is a prayer that we are supposed to pray together as a church. So it's a little contradictory here, what Jesus says. 
But we're supposed to do these things because we don't want other people to see us doing them. We just want God to see us doing them and to be caught up in all of this. Because that last verse this, mo- this evening in Matthew chapter 6 says, For where your heart is, your treasure is also. Right? Is that what it says? For where your heart is, your treasure is also. I, I know I said it wrong. I said it wrong intentionally to see who's paying attention. No, you're good. You're good. That's the way that we hear it. For where our heart is, our treasure will be also. That's not what the verse says. The verse says, for where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So what is it that you treasure? What is it that you're giving up? What is it that you're giving over? Jesus says that we have to do three spiritual practices during Lent. And it's actually three spiritual practices through all of our Christian life. These are the three things that we need to do. We need to give alms. And alms are giving of ourselves, ourselves, our time, our possessions. Everything that we have has been given to us to help others. Because we've been blessed with what we've been given. So we in turn are supposed to turn around and help other people with it. We're supposed to give. It's a basic Christian tenet. Not because we get anything out of it, but because that's what we're called to do. We're called to pray. That's pretty simple, actually, right? To pray. We're supposed to be in conversation with God, speaking and and building our relationship, because we all know that any relationship that does not include communication does what? It fizzles and it goes away. If you don't communicate, the relationship does not last. So we have to be in constant contact, in constant communication with God through prayer in our lives. So pray daily. Giving of everything that we've been given to someone else. Pray. Always in conversation with God. And the last one, fasting. This one's a little bit tougher. How many of you have ever fasted? It's not something that a lot of people do anymore. But what is fasting? My daughter is holding her stomach. Fasting, in the literal sense, is going without food, right? Like during the season of Lent, if we were Catholic, we, I would be telling you that you're not supposed to be eating meat. Right? We give up all meat during the season of Lent. You can have fish on Fridays, but no meat any other day of the week. No. They've changed it since Vatican II, but before Vatican II it was no meat at all during the season of Lent, fish on Fridays. Things have loosened in the Catholic Church now. So that's not even necessarily true. And that's not even necessarily true depending upon who the priest is for the Catholic Church that you go to. But that's not the point of fasting. That's an imposed doctrinal rule upon people. That's not what Jesus meant. I'm not knocking the Catholic Church. If that helps them in their spiritual discipline to go closer to Christ, by all means do it. If that helps you in your spiritual discipline to grow closer to Christ during these 40 days, give up meat, by all means. I will be there to support you. I will eat all of your meat for you. I'll be right there. Call me anytime. I'll come in and have lunch with you. Fasting is not about giving up food in Jesus' understanding here in our text. We're supposed to give of ourselves, of everything that we've been given, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. That means we're supposed to financially give, and we're supposed to give the things that we have. He talks in the Gospels about giving the coat off your back, about giving an extra pair of shoes, about giving up everything that we have to someone else who is in need of it. And we're supposed to be in that conversation, that constant contact with God, praying daily. In the closet, in the car. If you pray in a car, please don't close your eyes. If you're driving, if you're not driving, you can close your eyes, that's fine. But if you're driving, please don't close your eyes as you're praying. In constant contact with God. And fasting means giving things up. Maybe that self-deprecating talk. You don't know that word, look it up. Not right now. Give up self-deprecating talk. Give up 
What do you need to give up? Bacon. <laughs> that's meat. We've already covered that. Give up something that's holding you back. We all know something. If we sat here long enough and thought about it, there's one thing in our lives that we do that we wish we didn't. Right? There's one thing, one way that we act to other people. There's one way that we strive to do things in our lives. And it just hits us. You know what it is. I'm not going to ask you to say it. That's what God, that's what Jesus is telling us to give up in our fasting. That thing that's keeping us from that relationship with Him. You see, that's what this is all about. It's about pointing us to the fact that if we lay our treasures at the feet of Jesus, everything that's in our lives, everything that we possess, everything that we hold, anything that is there that keeps us from God, that treasure, just lay it at His feet and give it up then your heart's going to go right along with it. And that's exactly what these 40 days are about. Drawing our hearts closer to God. Drawing our lives closer to Him. And living in that path that He set before us. Walking down that, that road. That's what these days are about. That's what this night is about. Understanding that we all are dust. And someday we're going to return to that dust. But in that day that we return to that dust, we will be brought home to God in the heavenly banquet, gathered together with all of the saints, singing His praises forever. So give Him everything that you have now, so that He can give you the best life that you could ever possibly imagine.